Okay, this is a road uh, out of our bear, head, as I said, heading towards um, a pond and of course Posse Ears. Um, just entering the little village of... If I can pronounce it... La Bozielle. And the front line, this front line says the 1st of July 1916. It was here, we're just crossing that front line now. Okay, we're still travelling along for about 2.2 um, kilometres from Bossiers. And I might just stop at this cemetery here on the left. There is a parking area here, so I'll indicate and I'll just drop over. Okay, that's uh, heading back towards our bear. Just stopped on the side of the road. This little place called Oliver, I think it is. Just over there is a pretty big cemetery there. Just going to pan around the landscape. And in the distance there is uh, a thief pole where I'm heading to. The turn off is uh, in Poziers. And of course, last night about 6 30, uh, Lawrence. Uh, was kind enough to take me to the top of the tower, some 45 metres. Absolutely brilliant. So, where I'm standing uh, um, is where, well, the Battle of the Somme took place. We passed the, um, the front line back in um, the little village, uh, which is July 1916. There is a memorial. A bit of traffic on the road. A bit of, there's a memorial up there, so we'll just pull in and have a bit of a look. Right, Pitt Street. Okay, we'll just duck over there shortly. And of course, the famous um, windmill, or the, where the Second Division Memorial is, uh, further down on the right. Okay, we're back uh, back on the road. Um, this is Poziers British Cemetery and Memorial, 250 metres, just on the left. So we'll park in there and go and have a bit of a look. We're about a kilometre this side of uh, Poziers, and this is the um, Poziers British Cemetery, where a lot of Australians are buried in this uh, in this uh, cemetery here. There's an inscription up there that says Poziers British Cemetery in memory of the officers and men of the 5th and 4th Armies who fought on the Somme battlefields. 21st of March, 7th of August 1918. And of those who they're dead who had no known graves. And that's the road which takes you back out there and you can see on top of the church in the distance that famous gold statue I'm just going to pan around the fields so lush and green and then deep valleys. The Australians fought so bravely and lost so many in such a small area. The first and the second division memorials around Poziers. I have to take a, a little bit of video of the gates here. Absolutely incredible. Take a Video through the through the bars and the gate. And I'm just inside now. They're pretty heavy handles, those. Certainly solid indeed. I'm just in the uh, the entryway here. And all around the walls, the 
guys have no known grave. Right, I'm going to read from the uh, from the register here. There's actually ten registers to this um, memorial. Posiers Memorial. Posiers is a village some six kilometres northeast of the town of Albert. The memorial encloses Posiers British Cemetery, which is a little south of the village on the north side of the main road D929 from Albert to Posiers. On the road frontage is an open arcade terminated by small buildings and broken in the middle by the entrance and gates. Along the sides and back stone tablets are fixed in the stone rubble walls bearing the names of the dead grouped under their regiments. The memorial relates to the period of crisis in March and April of 1918 when the 5th Army was driven back by overwhelming numbers across the former Somme battlefields and to the succeeding period of four months during which they was built up behind the new front. The Army, which on the 8th of August 1918 began the advance to victory. The memorial commemorates 14,000 casualties of the United Kingdom, 300 of the South African forces who have no known grave and who fell in France during the 5th Army retreat in Somme the 21st March the 7th of August 1918. The Corps and Regiment's most largely represented are the Rifle Brigade with over 600 names, the Durham Light Infantry with approximately 600 names, Machine Gun Corps with 500, the Manchester Regiment with approximately 500, the Royal Horse, Royal Field Artillery with over 400 names. It should be added that the memorial, though it stands in a cemetery of largely Australian graves, does not bear any Australian names. The Australian soldiers who fell in France, whose graves are not known, are commemorated the National Memorial at Villers Bretna. Quite interesting that. Um, there are a lot of rising suns on the headstones which I can see, so we'll go for a bit of a walk around. Okay, I'm going to take a walk around the cemetery. A lot of rising suns here. First one I come across is Rini, 56 Battalion, April 1917, age 30. Marsh, Thurlborn, McLean, Lillycrap, Andrews, Bowstead. Lieutenant Bowstead was Middlesex Regiment, attached to the uh, Royal Flying Corps. Boland, Nutley, Gallagher, Coots, all around about April 1917. So this row here is mainly Australians, the front row. All killed, 3rd, 4th of April 1917. Bradley, Spindler, Murdoch, Navin, Smith, McCarty, Thompson, Field, Wills, Cairns, Borthwick, Murphy, Little, Edwards, 51st Battalion, 1st of April 1917, Chauncey, 50th Battalion, sorry, 56th Battalion, Gloucestershire Regiment towards the end here, and that was just the first row. Beautifully kept, as they all are. It's just looking at the side of the memorial there. And just sit this right front, right up against the wall. More Australians buried here. Billum, Campbell. Now Billum was young, young 19 year old, 25th of August 1916, 21st Battalion. And on those walls, all of those with no known grave to the three sides of the cemetery. Let me take a walk up to the uh, Memorial Cross. Island Light Infantry, Group of Four, Roy, 1st of July 1916. First day of the summer offensive. Harford, Australia. Two Australians here together. Rafferty, 8th Battalion, 26th of July, 1916. Yates, same battalion, 26th of July. 
I said Corporal Anderson, 8th Battalion, July 1916, age 24. Carter, CL, 21st Battalion, 29th of July, age 21, 1916. Needham, 10th Battalion, age 26, 19th to the 23rd of August, 1916. He's got two dates on that one. Proctor Davies. Just the left here, Jones. It's like 3rd Battalion, age 22. An Australian soldier of the Great War. C. Paul, Australian Engineers, 12th of August 1916. Start, 18th Battalion is next to him. I'm going to have a bit of a walk around the, uh, around uh, where all the names are of those who have no known grave. This is looking, uh, well this photo, a bit of video has been taken to the little cenotaph. All the headstone names are facing towards the gate. It's a, it's a really lovely memorial, this, and cemetery. It's like a shrine. You're enclosed. There's a little bit of information that's to the right of me. The newly established Ulster Division attacked on the 1st of July 1916. And in a spirit of wholehearted enthusiasm, it was the only unit to seize the German trench, but exposed on its flanks after advancing too fast, caught in enemy machine, machine gun fire, and pounded by British artillery, which was not aware of the situation, it had to withdraw after terrible losses. So they got hammered by both sides, the Germans and the British artillery. And yeah, what they're saying, this is actually a replica of the tower on Lady Helen Dufferin's property at Clanboy in Northern Ireland, where the Irish Division underwent its training before the Battle of the Somme. So it wasn't there originally, it was a um, it was built as a replica to the one in Northern Ireland. This is the memorial stone here. I'll just read the inscription. In memory of the Valor shown by all ranks of the 36th Ulster Division who served King and Country during the Great War of 1918. Captain Bell, VC. Second Lieutenant Emerson, VC. Lance Corporal Seaman VC, 2nd Lieutenant DeWin VC, Rifleman McFads, Fadden, McFadden Zian VC, Rifleman Quig, Lieutenant Cather, Sub Lieutenant Knox. All was placed here in 1991 by the Royal Irish Rangers. So 9 VCs won in that uh, just one division. Just looking down into the valley there and the poppies in the field are growing just a track down there between the fields into the valley and the poppies uh, in the previous shot just growing here in the field with the birds whistling in the background quite fitting Okay, I'm just heading up towards Beaumont, Beaumont Hamel, which is the um, battlefield memorial 
parked I've got set up um, the Canadians oh. Memorial no entry so it must be all this wood of land on the right hand side a couple of flag posts there there's a uh, bus so it must be in the right spot so I'll just park in there and they will go for a bit of a walk yep we are Okay, so I did a bit of car cam coming up there. Right, I've just arrived at the Beaumont Hamill Newfoundland Memorial, Canadian Historical uh, or National Historical Site. It's a lovely day here today, so I dare say that we'll get a few visitors. And the entry is just here on my left. Just looking around the uh, the fields here, landscapes um, slightly uneven, but visually you can see for a, uh, a fair way, a couple of kilometres. As I pan round, just to my to my left here, my bearings right. Uh, Teepvale Memorial is just to the left, or to the right of the um, of the wood there on the left. about 3k, Poissiers is about 3.5-4k IK Farm or Moo Cow as the Australians called it is in that direction there as you walk in it sort of grabs you straight away it's a monument just up there in the distance but you get a lot of information as I walk around which is great Talks about the, the services and the sacrifices the Newfoundlanders uh, took during the First World War. Participated in the Great Somme Offensive, where on the 1st of uh, July 1916, um, they had a uh, there was a terrible slaughter in this area here. The memorial park became uh, known in 1922, and of course, they've, uh, I believe the Canadians actually own this land here. Okay, uh, Newfound War Memorial Park, Beaumont Hamill. This park embraces the ground over which the Newfoundlanders fought on the first day, July 1916. It was purchased and constructed under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Nangle from funds subscribed by the government and women of Newfoundland. It was owned by Field Marshal Earl Haig, KT, GCBOM, late Commander Chief of the British Expeditionary Force. On the 7th of June, 1925. And as you walk in the entry, you can see, see some of the original trenches here. That's the information centre there. Okay, that's where I've walked in. That's the entrance there. And the trench line follows all the way down the side there. Looks very close to the fence. There's a lot of that around here, so basically as it uh, was back then, except for the overgrown grass and things like that. Can you steer the information um, house, I suppose you could say. Just looking out into the field there. This first one talks about uh, Father Thomas Nangle, chaplain of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment. Advised the establishment of 16 cemeteries and five commemorative monuments in France and Belgium. And this is on the other information. 30 hectare uh, memorial dedicated to all the Newfoundlanders who participated in the Great War. And um, some photos of graves there. in the uh, information type uh, museum centre quite well laid out so I'll take a walk through here before I go out in the fields and the guy at the desk uh, is, is a Canadian which is good 
And when you find they're either French or Belgian, depending on the, mu the museum. Division 1914-1918. You can do a self-guided tour or um, they've got guides here which is really great. But just to the left of me there's another trench. You can actually see it. Wind up in between the woods there. There's another shot there of the 29th Division Memorial. Set up on a slight mound, which is uh, well manicured, I suppose you could say. This um, path leads me to the famous Moose Monument, the Newfoundland, which overlooks the park. It was just an impressive sight, just in between the trees there. But wherever you walk, you see shell holes which are here. Well, they're everywhere really. There's the moose there in all his glory. Have a look in the battlefield. There is a viewing platform from just around the base there, so I'll take a walk up there. I'll just take this small winding path up here. Trenches. Part of, as I said, it's some change from back then, except for the overgrowth. You can see the trenches how they wind around the mounds that's where I walk from that's where the entry is just down there and the memorial to the 29th division is just there now whipper snippers are going and I'll pet do a pan around look at the trenches down there there's actually a car parked down in there as well that's how uh, deep they are in the mounds The walk continues along there and there's a monument just in the distance there. So go and have a look at that. Sheep are grazing there in the paddock. There he is there, a bit of a closer view. And the uh, viewing platform's just there so I'll keep winding around. And you get a bit of a perspective on how the trenches where they actually go right along up there towards the farm up there, but they're just everywhere. And there you go down there at the entry. So we'll actually walk between the, uh, the mounds, which was originally a uh, trench. There is a cemetery down there which I'll also visit. So I'll be here for an hour or so by the looks of it. Instead of walking around but it'll be very interesting I think. Just uh, going around through the trenches. Just um, around the viewing platform there are indicators as to where different places are. That's danger trees in that direction there. Which is up there. And Beaumont Hamill is three quarters of a mile in uh, that direction there. So it gives you an idea of the distances. 
Now, I can't leave this one out. The Australian Memorial in Pozieres is five miles in, uh, in that direction there, which is what about 11, 12k. Just heading down the path from the monument, heading down to the, um, the trench where you can walk through. Just keep it running as I, as I walk down to the entry, which is just over there. I'm just in front of the uh, memorial now, and uh, just below it, those names who uh, made this supreme sacrifice. The first one to the left is the Newfoundland Merchant uh, Marine. And this one in the middle. To the glory of God and the perpetual remembrance of those officers and men of Newfoundland forces who gave their lives by land and sea in the Great War and have no known graves. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. And to the right is the Newfoundland Royal Naval Reserve. This is the one I think down here. Just another shot of the moose and part of the memorial just there. And uh, that's where you walk up the path there, just to the right, to get you up to the viewing platform. A walk along here, I might just feed the camera over there, uh, the parapet which you can see the fields there. And we'll just wind around here. Oh look, there's two Irishmen up there. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I'll let you guys pass. <laughs> Okay, and as we look over the parapet once again. It's sort of been all sandbagged and reinforced and, and as much protection as the Canadians can put together. Stairs leading up, so easy for me to walk up. Yeah, but back then it wouldn't have been. You can see the trench lines there. Main trenches, communication trenches, command posts. And there's that moose again. As I walk along the path, you can still see the uh, outlines of the trenches there. Fences here are all electrified, mainly because of the sheep and different paddocks. Now, yeah, there's, I don't know whether it is, but some, there's a petrified tree there, or what's left in cement. It may have been there back then, preserved somewhat. You can see the line of trenches down there as well. Alright, just the moose again. Um, the memorial to the Newfoundlanders. And this is the path I've taken. And uh, as you walk it, you see the outlines of the trenches, shell holes. Yeah, you can see them all down there.
Only up there and there's a cemetery there. Tucked in the corner. I also noticed too as I walk along here there's uh, number markers which indicate um, what actually happened here. Oh, when I go back to the information centre I'll uh, I'll get some info on it and uh, be able to do a bit of an edit, a bit of a text over this video. There's a line of trenches there. I've only walked a few hundred metres, but they would have lost a lot in this short area. Shell hole just there. Oh, it's looking back up to the bank. As I head down to the uh, cemetery, there's shell holes everywhere. There's one just up there, another one here, more over here. Right, so it's certainly concentrated around this area, this little area here. That's the uh, cemetery just there. Just walking down the rows, and uh, how beautifully it's kept with the colour, the reds and the flowers. You've got. Uh, a lot of these have actually got two buried in the uh, this grave, like this one here. Chaff, Royal Newfoundlanders Regiment, 1st of July. It's first day of the Battle of the Somme. O'Donnell, Royal Inskilling Fusiliers, 1st of July, age 26. Jay Cotter, MM, Royal Inskilling Fusiliers, age 28. Age 20, 1st of July. So these are all the first day of the Somme in this row here. At the very back there, um, the headstones inscribed on the top, known to be buried in this cemetery. A slight slope, but it's uh, really nice indeed. And of course the moose head is a symbol of the um, Newfoundlanders, obviously they pronounce it a bit differently, but that's the way I pronounce it at the moment. Support and Highlanders there. We have a mixture of Scottish, British, and um, and Canadian, of course. the monument you see on the distance so I'm not too far from uh, from the cemetery and um, these guys really had to have the hard yards trying to gain control from the Germans down in this area here right I've just uh, leaving the cemetery heading up towards the uh, hill behind me just uh, another pano of where I've come from You can see the, the monument there in the distance. Okay, so just on top of the road at the moment. To the right, it's just mainly uh, overgrown down. A bit of a deep valley there. There could be a small creek. The line of trees you can see there. But to the left of me, where I'm walking, I see a couple of monuments there. There's this one here. And there's one just to the left across. Other side, number four. Um, and that's uh, something I'll have to look at when I get back. But that's uh, some trenches there. So obviously with those um, numbered signposts, the notes that um, something happened there. Well obviously uh, during the offensive or defensive, loss of men. The name of that particular trench, but as I said, I'll do a, an edit title rollover as the film rolls. Okay, number five um, trench leading down there. I think there may be a big crater down there, um, so without 
have the information at hand, I just can't sort of say, but there's a fairly deep ravine down there. In the little shell hole here. There's a memorial cross just up there. Looks like it could be an original one as well. Okay, I'm going to end this tape now. So I've got four minutes remaining and I'm just going to change the tape over. Memorial Cross. The plaque has been taken off. Um, there should be some information about it. Uh, either on this memorial. Okay. Just right in front of me. This memorial is to the um, the 51st Highland Division. Setting is very nice. It's got two big lines right at the memorial itself guarding this area and this cross down here I dare say would have been the original 51st Highlanders memorial cross placed in that exact position okay this does have a uh, a bronze plaque on it obviously well it may not be the original but I thought it was the marking where the original one was but anyway let's have a look and see what it reads yeah as I thought the cross is erected in memory of the officers NCOs and men of the 51st Highland Division who fell at Highwood in July 1916 so I'm gonna go down there and have a look at that I, yeah I dare say that's a big could be part of a big, big crater big explosion in the tunnels. I'm going to have a look anyway. Okay, that's the memorial there and I've just walked down the path here and just to the right of me um, you can see it drops and keeps dropping down through in here. Eventually down where those trees are just there. Just hard to say it could have been an explosion from the tunnels. Or just the uh, the land itself but no there is a path down there but you can't go down there some unexploded uh, bombs and I ain't going in that area there that's why the electrified fence is there as I walk up to the cross of remembrance just on my left here unusual rock formation looks like two eyes and a nose part of a skull a bit scary actually and then here you can see shell holes more shell holes maybe some trenches and of course that's the 51st division and we're all over there with the two lines right there this is looking from the memorial back down into that ground slopes down and gives you a better perspective of the shell holes just in that area this is interesting uh, all around the base you have the uh, soldiers headstones let's go right round the base of the memorial cross. There is a small cemetery up there. Where the man on his tractor is. Or was he bugger? This is called Hunter. Hunter's Cemetery. And around the base you have 
In the cemetery are buried 46 officers and men who are commemorated on the headstone surrounding the, this cross. So it's quite a nice setting there. So that's Hunter's Cemetery. Um, just about to leave that. And there is another one behind me. A very nice setting indeed then. Okay. Just walking up to the next cemetery. This is Hawthorne Ridge Cemetery number 2, 1916 to 1918. There is an indicator panel number 6. So uh, obviously this year the battle took place on this ridge. And, uh, all those are buried here. As you can see they're all close together. There's no gap in between any of the stones. Normally in the cemeteries you see some together, the majority are they do have that separation but in this one you don't okay these are uh, 1st of July 1916 age 20 I'm waiting F Taylor Border Regiment 1st of July 1916 Andrew Hutchison 13th of November 1916 age 22 1st of July This front row are all separated, 1st of July 1916. Soldier of the Great War, Royal Newfoundland Regiment. Two Soldiers of the Great War, I'll read this one out. 2172 Private T.J. Spence Border Regiment, 1st of July 1916, age 19, cherished memories of one so dear, a rough recall by silent tear. There's an unknown soldier buried there as well. I'm just leaving the Hawthorne Ridge number 2 cemetery. Heading back up towards um, the entry, and you can see the, uh, the moose. There's a lot of people up there at the moment. I said it's a lovely day, so there'll be certainly a lot of tourists around. Just make it out there in the distance. Okay, that's the 51st Division Highland Memorial there the smaller Hunters Cemetery there, just to the left of the Memorial Cross is. And just down past the trees there is the Hawthorne Ridge, number two cemetery. Just at the end of the trees, and um, as you can see there's people up near the monument. And this is the road I'll be taking to head back to the, uh, the entry. That's where I've walked from, from there, from the Hawthorne Ridge Cemetery. But I'm just on the side of the road here and some trenches which caught my eye. And of course in the distance you can see the memorial of the, uh, the 51st Division. So just looking down, down there. For the landscape it's just dotted with shell holes and trenches. As you can see on the opposite side here, just trenches and mounds and some shell holes there. It's a fairly big shell hole, that one. And it stretches all the way back up to where the memorial is up there. Just listening to the guide, uh, he was saying that the Newfoundland, Newfoundland was pretty well entrenched here and they had the barbed wire just in front. Um, in a radius of about one kilometre, there were five machine guns, German machine guns, all firing up towards this way here. And there, that tree is a petrified tree which has survived all those years. And 
and uh, within this small area they, the Canadians took a lot of casualties only because of the burst of fire from the five German machine guns positioned there, there, there and just down in their area so they were cross firing into the trenches down here okay head back along this track that's the trench that I first walked along just down in there just on the top of it, it just winds around and of course the memorial was just up there I'm just about to head off and I've just found this information it's an aerial photo taken in 1997 um, of Beaumont Hamill and all the areas of interest so uh, which is great I was talking to the guide there and apparently this area here was all your communication trenches and what happened was that the, um, the British uh, were taking heavy casualties up over the rise to my left up past the monument and the Canadians reinforced with machine gun fire from there Germans was that heavy they lost a lot of casualties so with that I'll, um, I'll head off to Vimy Ridge as I leave um, uh, the new found of Beaumont Hamill's memorial, the Canadian memorial there just heading down the road you can see underneath the power lines the T-Bail um, monument there in the distance so 1st of July 1916 Battle of the Somme it's a place raged around here and lost tens of thousands of men this is the little village of Hamill Beaumont Hamill. I'm just um, heading into now. A little church there just on my, well, will be on my right as I head down here. That's the famous little village of Hamill. Not much of it. Some houses, a church. Obviously a strategic point back then in 1916. Signpost Albert, Avalu, I think it is, Beaufort and Peakvale. And of course the 36th Ulster Division Memorial up there on the left. Might pop in there actually on the way through. It was closed this morning. But I'll um, might pop in there and have a cup of tea. Anyway, this is uh, the little village of Hamill I'm just leaving. Okay, I'm just standing outside the Ulster, Ulster Division Memorial Tower. I'm just looking into uh, Teepvale Wood. Now, just going to pan around and put the camera down is the little village of Hamill, which is there. You can just see the, uh, well, you can see the church there now. But the road I come down from Beaumont Hamill Memorial, which is just up there, um, the, the Newfoundlanders Memorial Battlefield. Um, it was quite an interesting walk around. It's about 1.5 kilometre around the site, but that's it just up there. That's where I've just come from. And as you can see, and I'll just come down on the camera a bit, the poppies in the field just in front of me. Okay, I've just arrived in Vimy, oh, John Williamson playing in the background. Um, leading up towards Vimy Ridge, this is the Canadian Memorial. Just come off the main road here, uh, just before you get into Vimy itself. Okay, the signpost says there, to the trenches, tunnels, the monument to the right, which is the Canadian monument um, intersection here, so I'm going to turn left. Just at the uh, here at the Canadian Memorial at Vimy Ridge, there is another monument which is further up to the right along the road there. Just go out and follow it up, and apparently you can see right down into the valley. Okay, I'll get a little bit more info on this as I walk around. But there's trenches here and tunnels apparently, and you can see the landscape just next to me is shell holes and no doubt it's trenches. Take a look up here. 
Here we go. Canadian flag flying there. Bunker system just behind it. It's pretty well set up. I would have had a fair bit of protection here. Tunnels under the hills there. Now where that line of trees is is where the road is now and uh, these defensive positions are looking right over to that area there. And up there on the parapet, um, I pronounced it right, you have two steel protection shields so they put their, their weapons through those and uh, pretty much protected from uh, any shell fire, anybody shooting at them. Unless they're a good shop and can aim right into the hull there. Looks like I can go down here. So the stairs lean down there, so we'll go down and have a bit of a look. Okay, I'm going to take a walk down through these trenches down into the, um, the tunnel. Obviously, it goes under the road there. So I'll get a bit of footage as I go down. Just look at the uh, the trenches here. The the tunnels you can't actually freely walk through them. It takes it'll be guided. And it's a 45 minute uh, walk, so I think I uh, I get that one a miss. It'd be interesting, but I mean anyway, I'll get a brochure and when I go back up and through the information centre. Okay, just uh, on the rise there is where the uh, defences are. Massive big crater down here though. Path which takes you up to another memorial up to the top right there, and on the other side to massive big craters. Just in the woods there, you can see trenches, bomb craters. And to the left, you have more trenches. They're not actually sandbags; they're all cement to uh, represent or to look like uh, sandbags. Quite effective though. Big sheep grazing up there. I would head back down to the car park and head over to the uh, other monument which is uh, high up on the ridge. Standing in uh, one of the trenches. This could be a view of the bomb crater right in front of me. There are some big craters, this one and the one on the other side. I'm just near the uh, information uh, and souvenir shop. That's the Vimy Ridge Canadian Memorial there in the distance. Just going to go and have a look around the shop and uh, see what they've got in there. These um, information signs just talk about restoring Vimy Memorial. I think how it's deteriorating and there's um, a lot of work happening on the uh, memorial itself. These are the signs here and they have a uh, obviously a small museum in there as well. I'll go and have a look through there. Just looking back down onto the car park. Not many here really. Well, it's half past three in the afternoon. Okay, I've just arrived at the car park at the monument. Take a little bit of footage through the fields. Onto the monument there.
heading up towards the monument on Vimy Ridge. The Canadians fought very heavily here in uh, 1917. Just reading the, uh, the information as I walked through the gate there. It's a little bit better view there. Looking at the top of the memorial. right in front of it now. The kids are gone so the noise is uh, abated a bit which is good. Just going to go around the base of it. Right to my right. And all around it is um, those who have no name grave I believe. into the wall. And all the way down there as well. Just on the side of the monument, 1915, Ypres priest St. Julian, Fresenberg, Belwardy. 1916, Somme, Bazatine, Poziers. 1917, Arras, Vimy. Hill 70, Pilkin, Polygon Wood. Okay, I'm just uh, at the front of the memorial now. There's an inscription on the wall that says the Canadian Corps, the 9th of April 1917, with four divisions in line on a front four miles attack, captured this ridge. They actually captured this ridge from the Germans. And that's the view down there into, uh, I believe Vimy's over there, but you, uh, in that direction is uh, Belgium. Standing directly in front of the memorial, this is the ridge the Canadians come up and uh, and took it from the Germans. It's very high up. One of there is obviously looking down into the ridge where those Canadians who did fall in the ridge attack still lay out there with no no grave. to actually walk down the side of the memorial some steps behind me so I'll get some shots looking back up just met an Australian couple from Tamworth have been looked after by a British couple so gave me a few hints on where to go to and the next shot you'll see is me looking up at her there? just standing in front of the memorial at the moment no, I'm coming down. I just want to film the soldier down here. Okay, she's just yeah, looking down. Yeah. Just down the bottom of the memorial, it says in memory the Canadians, I think it's in Latin, not French. It must be in Latin, like. Anyway, that's the, the monument is there. So, with that, we'll head back up there. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hey, guys. Right, so and I'm from Brisbane. I work here. Hey, nice to meet you guys. All right, nice you. take so care. Morning. Okay, there we go. Personal service. Now you all got to wave like the Queen. You all right? <laughs> I taught her to drive in Quebec. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Okay, I'm just leaving uh, Bimmy Ridge Memorial. They were lovely people. They were really real characters. So I'll head off. Um, back down to the car park there. Very moving memorial that. Terry looking down at um, Deepvale Wood 
and this area up here was held by the Germans and down in the wood where I've just been um, I climbed the fence and there's a few old trenches set up unfortunately the area was locked up but I managed to get over the fence <clears throat> it gives you an idea where I am there's uh, the memorial just up there and um, and the village of Thief, Thief Pool just over there Okay, I so said this is Milk Cemetery. The road leading up here was a bit bumpy. Managed to get up here. Um, rain is easing off a little bit. It did rain fairly heavy before. But I thought I'd make the, the trek into this cemetery before I head off. There is a, um, apart from the headstones, memorial plaques just in front of the, um, the cross there. So I'll go and have a look at those shortly. Just walking past the rows, there's um, a lot from the Knotts and Derby Regiment, West Yorkshire, Black Watch, all around the 3rd of September, September, October of 1916. Interesting, I've never seen this before. These are in a different, uh, they're not in an upright position. at the Mill Cemetery with the memorial in the background there. The valley, Thiepful Wood, Thiep Paul Wood, which was the main British defence line there. They pretty much set up with their trenches and the Germans had the high areas around where I'm standing. I'm going to go along this row here, 17th of April 1918, age 22. Lacey Hornsby, 1916, side of the Great War, Royal Sussex Regiment, Royal West Kent, 1916, H.W. Smith, Royal West Kent Regiment, 1916, September of 1916, age 18, Warder, sorry, Manda, Lomaz, 1916, Salmons, Cambridge, she Regiment, Duke of Wellington Regiment, 3rd of September, West Yorkshire. Lieutenant Arthur Noel Sharp, Duke of Wellington Register Regiment, 3rd of September 1916. I think I'm getting a bit tired. Age 20, G. Wilkinson, Duke of Wellington Regiment, 3rd of September. Both killed on the same day. Sleeping with England's heroes in the watchful care of God. And there's three graves up there with a, um, some information about it, so I'll go up there. But just look in the fields in the distance behind the cemetery. How high we are up here. Well, I am anyway. Well, we being these guys here, but yeah. Just looking at this row here, all from the West Yorkshire Regiment, 3rd of September 1916. You have one from the Royal Irish Rifles on the 1st of July 16. But uh, all this row here. On the 3rd of September. So you can get the, uh, the entry to the cemetery and around the back of the cross. Okay, these three, to the memory of these three British soldiers killed in action 1916 and buried at the time in Divion Road British Cemetery, which was destroyed in later battles. Their glory shall not be blotted out. Private Law, West Yorkshire, 3rd of September. M. Harper, West Yorkshire, 3rd of September 1916. P. Miles, King Owens, Yorkshire, 5th of July 1916. That's it, looking at the, the fields there and across into Thief Paul and, uh, and the memorial there. This is the road out of the, the Mill Cemetery. Full of bricks, goes down to a bit of mud there. Of course, just in front, there's a cemetery in there. They'll pull, they'll fall wood, wood, don't tie it. Anyway, sort of gets to a bit of a muddy track now. Keep the revs up, I don't want to get sort of bogged around here. I'm just heading up to the uh, Albert Bapon Road. This here Marquee farm is just on the left there. So I'm just 
sort of heading out. There on the left as I go past. It's so, so easy for me to drive through. It's about two kilometres to the main road, which takes me up through the, the pond and then I'm heading up towards Armatiers. Okay, I'm just heading out towards uh, Adipoziers and the uh, Second Australian um, Infantry uh, or Division Memorial is just up here on the left. The flags are flying and the uh, memorial to the tank corps is on the right. So this area um, where the tanks first started off and of course to the left there is the famous windmill where the flags are flying taken by the Australians with heavy losses. All right, we're heading up through here to the pond. It's about 12 kilometers. And this is the front line of the 1st of September, 1916. I've just passed it. Um, yeah, then as I said, I'm on to Armatiers and then head up into Belgium from there. We need to get something to eat. I'm bloody starving. It's two o'clock in the afternoon, Saturday afternoon, and rain has stopped, so um, we'll keep traveling. But I'm heading towards the pond at the moment. And just, uh, there's a little village up here called Corsalet, um, the South African Memorial and New Zealand Memorial, which I visited yesterday. It was uh, just behind me, the turn off was to the right. Um, there's certainly some major battles around uh, around this area here, like any other area. But um, the names themselves are uh, certainly pronounced and renowned. Uh, is fighting in this area. Okay, just passing through the front line, um, November 1916, the Battle of Wallencourt, which we're uh, in the area of, and the Wallencourt uh, British Cemetery is just on my right. So you can see the advances from July through to, uh, to November. I mean, I've driven in you know, half an hour, basically, less than that, and it took a all that time to get through. Of course, uh, it's all fenced off and roped off. But I've come here with Johan, and um, we've uh, had a couple of drinks in there and, and met the guys that are involved in it, which is really, really good. This is the uh, the road in from Melbourne itself. If you head back this way, about a kilometre and a half um, that way, the signs to the VC uh, corner and from Bamora's. Uh, down towards that way, so we'll head off there shortly. Okay, this is at the side of the, the pub. And of course, the uh, on the left side here is the, the church. And this does eventually take you down to a grass path and um, down onto the site itself, which is down here. I'm going to ask permission. This is the author down here, the uh, book from Els. I'm going to ask him if I can take some footage of the, uh, the dick from up here. Okay, this is looking down at the, uh, the dick. Just talking to the author of the book um, from Els. Got an interesting chat, and he's offered for me to come down tomorrow and go into the press area, but I'll just see what happens. I'll get enough any video footage here, so. They've opened up three sites, I believe. They do have a guard here, 24 hours. And a pretty vicious sort of dog as well. Okay, this is the path. It's what they call church, the church path. And it takes you down there to the, uh, to the dig. The entry to the dig is just um, past those containers on the left. And uh, Johan was saying that uh, the Germans, how they brought the those killed on the battlefield and buried them was just to the left of the dig. There was a um, train tracks and they brought them in, unloaded them and, uh, and buried them and of course took all their IDs and clothing off them and sent the information back uh, through Geneva 
through then to, to the UK, then of course back to Australia. Other side of mezzanines, of course, where the famous battle took place in uh, 1917, around June. There was fierce fighting around this area here, and we're heading to um, to my right, Blocksturt Wood. It's about four kilometres away, just down in that direction there, and um, you have Mud Corner down there, Hyde Park Corner. Uh, Piccadilly Circus and then the cemeteries down there you have the um, Prowest Cemetery you have a bit of information on Bairns father he was a, a captain who was a, a cartoonist and um, created fragments to fragments of France and um, an old bill anyway we're here at the um, island of, uh, of Ireland Peace Park and that's the memorial there I'm going to look at a bit more info on uh, to this memorial. There's also a really good viewing platform inside the memorial itself. So I'll give you a bit of a, a view of down into the valley there. It's like an old mill. Some information here. It's in different languages. I've got the, uh, the English wording here. The Island of Ireland Peace Park. This peace tower, which is dedicated to the memory of those from the island of Ireland who fought and died in the First World War, it was erected by a journey of reconciliation and trust with the support of the people of Mezzanines. It was unveiled in 1998. Really well kept. There are some memorial plaques here. It's too late now to retrieve a fallen dream, too late to grieve. A name unmade, but not too late to thank God for what is great. A keen age sword, a soldier's heart, is greater than a poet's art, and greater than a poet's fame. A little grave that has no name. Francis Eldridge, uh, Fifth Inskilling Fusiliers. I've just been reading the inscriptions on some of these and, and the poetry is uh, certainly very meaning indeed. Um, I'm just going to pan down onto one here by Chaplain Francis Gleeson, the Royal Munster Fusiliers. Spent all night trying to console, aid and remove the wounded. It was ghastly to see them lying there in the cold, cheerless outhouses on bare stretches with no blankets to cover their freezing limbs. How true. There's three up here. This is Terence Poulter, 7th Royal Dublin Fusiliers. Hostilities will cease at 11am on the 11th day of the 11th month. After that time all firing will cease. This was joyous news approaching 11 o'clock. In our sector you could have heard a pin dropped. Even 11 o'clock came. There were loud cheers. The war was over. As far as we were concerned. <laughs> and as I was saying that, the bell started to ring in the church. The church is just over there. Just beyond those trees. Wow, that's a bit scary, isn't it? Another one, Patrick McGill, the, la the first one here. Well, it depends which way you walk. David Starr at Ninth Royal Irish Fusiliers. So the curtain fell over that tortured country of unmarked graves and unburied fragments of men. Murder and massacre, the innocent slaughtered for the guilty, the poor man for the sake of greed, of the already rich, the man of no authority, made the victim of the man who had gathered importance and wished to keep it. Quotations, poems by individuals, both during and uh, at Armistice. Quite fitting for a peace park. There's a 
viewing area just there that has a um, some information there as well these three um, commemorative stones first one the 30, 36 health the division lost 36,186 killed wounded or missing in the middle there is the 16th Irish division 28,398 killed wounded or missing and on the right, the 10th Irish Division, 9,363 killed, wounded or missing. I'm just taking a photo of these. These uh, have names on them. Munster. Leinster. Ulster. And Connaught. That's another view just down into the valley there. As I mentioned earlier, Plogstert and Armateers is down that way. Armateers is about 7k and Plogstert is about 3.5, 4k. So distance is certainly very close together. Okay, this is uh, the Peace Pledge. I'll read it out, but position the camera out there down into the fields as I read it out. From the crest of the ridge, which was a scene of horrific carnage in the First World War, in which we have built a peace park and round town to commemorate the thousands of young men from all parts of Ireland who fought a common en enemy, defended democracy and the rights of all nations whose graves are in shockingly uncountable numbers and those who have no graves, we condemn war and the fulfility of war. We denounce violence, aggression, intimidation, threats and unfriendly behaviour. As we jointly mark the armistice, on the 11th of November 1918, when the guns fell signed along the Western Front, we affirm that a fitting tribute to the principles of which men and women of the island of Ireland died in both world wars will be permanent peace. Quite interesting. And just a scan down the tower. And that's the entry just to the right there. More information here as I walk around the uh, in the park. It's got some maps of the area, which is good. Okay. I was looking at um, Ypres Salient, June to December of 1917. I'm just down here, at, just outside. The mezzanines, which is the original line in 1917. And in December, they were up through here. That was the third offensive. Oops, third offensive right up through here. Passchendaele, Brudenside, Polygon Wood. And then the actual Battle of Mezzanines. Uh, we're, we're here, well, I'm here, at the Peace Park. And you look to the left there and you can see the, the 19th, 16th and 36th divisions of the Ulster heading towards um, Weisjet, I think it's called. And, um, and of course the Anzac Corps are down in here. The two Anzac Corps. And um, this here. It road takes you down to um, Blockstert and Armatiers. So that's um, a good indication there. So where the peace park is, you're looking wrong down there. The battles, Bezanese took part around that area there. And all up around here as well, on the ridges. Okay, I'm just travelling down the road uh, where the Battle of Mezzanines took place. Well, this is the road here, but just to the left of me, a lot of the fighting took place and, uh, and down through this area here. Just heading towards uh, Foxter uh, Wood. At the moment it's about 3.5 k's, as I'm saying on the GPS there.
come a couple of k's out of uh, Pugstert um, the village down there but this is the turn off to the Prouse Point Mud Corner, Toronto Avenue, Pluxert Wood and Rifle House Cemetery. Uh, if you keep going down there you head down to Hyde Park Corner. So we'll, I'll head down there shortly. Where all the cows are, there is a sign that says Plark Bairns Father. Um, I just met a couple of Irish uh, guys at the Irish Memorial. And um, they're heading down in that direction as well. This is where I come from. Um, this road here, it's about a kilometre and a half back up into Mezzanine to, and of course the Irish Memorial of the Island of Ireland Peace Park. So I'll head down this track here. The Bairns Father Plark is actually on a farmhouse. So I missed that last time, but I'll um, certainly chase it up now. I'm just heading down the track here, down towards the uh, mud corner and the wood. First of all I'll pop in and have a look at the uh, photos of the plaque of Bean's father. Now he actually wrote a lot of his, um, well first started it, in magazines. Um, so it's very much a comical relief for the troops in the trenches. And there was Fragments of France, magazines brought out, um, really well put together. A bit of a morale boost for the troops. He was actually wounded, I'm not sure whether it was around here, but uh, he did survive the war I believe. This cemetery just on the right. Is Prouse Point Cemetery. There's some information there which I did gather last year. But Ben's father's plaques further up here. The turning to the Toronto Avenue is just to the to my right, which I'll come back to. Okay, I've just found it here. And uh, this cross up there says uh, 1914, the Khaki Chums, Christmas Truce. That was uh, 1914, 99 to 85 years, lest we forget. So it was a commemorative cross put in 1999. Okay. I believe here, this is where the Christmas Truce took place, in this area here. Well, it did. The 1914 Christmas Truce. The field had the, op the opposing lines running west to east through it. Although the major part of this was no man's land, at Christmas 1914, men of both armies and this part of the line met here to talk, swapped souvenirs and cigarettes, and were said to have played a game of football. The impromptu Christmas truce, frowned upon by British High Command, lasted for a week before the troops returned to the serious business of the war. The truce was never recorded north of this area but was enjoyed east of the wood and right down to the line into northern France. Both sides took the opportunity during the cessation of hostility to recover and bury dead scattered around no man's land. So this is where the Christmas truce was and Captain Bairn's father was part of it. And I'll just, there's the cross there. This is uh, the information I've just read out. But here, it says, where we met and talked with the frightful Fritz and a handful of Henrik on Christmas Day. Turnip Field, which is right here. So, I'm pretty close to this spot. And this is one of Bairns Further's um, famous prints depicting that scene. Incredible. So this is where it all happened. The Christmas truce in 1914. Okay, I'm just heading down into the um, into the wood now, which is just down there. Phone not connected. Okay, I'm just heading into Toronto Avenue, Plugster Wood, and you got the Rifle House Cemetery up here. Last time I was here, the trees are fairly much overgrown over the road, so hopefully we've got a bit more of a clear passage this time. Okay, they've done the road up, because that was last year, which is great. And there's the two Irish fellas' cars just there. Rifle House 
it's Toronto Evans just to my left. Then they go for a bit of a walk. Right, I've arrived back at Toronto Avenue Cemetery. I just had a quick chat to, to Barry in Brisbane there and said, uh, I'm calling from the communication trench. And it was just about there. So when, he, uh, when you watch this, Barry, you'll be able to see where I rang you from. Okay, um, the cemetery here has 78 Australians buried. The youngest is 18. The oldest is about 36. But uh, I've come back down here because a little bit more information on Captain Piggott and some fellow uh, soldiers who were killed in a trench not so far from here. I'm going to go off into the bush out there and we can look out into the fields as well. Of course this would have been all mud and slush shell holes and everything. Um, but we'll go back through here. And also buried here is um, one of the guys at work, Craig's uh, great uncle I believe. So I'll take another photo uh, uh, for him or for his family as well. And just in, in the corner there you have uh, Captain Piggott, who was killed on the 10th of June, 1917. And um, a Martin McNamara was also in the same shell hole on the 10th of June, is, uh, is buried here. And that's uh, Martin just there. I'm just going off record, Red Cross Records, 2109 Private M. McNamara, 36th Battalion, 10th of June, 1917. Um, some nice reefs around the Cross of Remembrance, which is there. Holy Jesus. Somebody's shooting in the forest. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Here we have 174 Corporal Shepherd, 33rd Battalion, 9th of June, 1917. And uh, uh, Corporal Shepherd, age 20 beloved son, Mr. and Mrs. W. Shepherd, Dorigo, New South Wales. Some uh, Australian flags and as I mentioned. Oh, geez, I better duck low, I think. Some memorial reefs there. People in Government of Australia, that's what it says around the, uh, around the flowers. And this is McNamara here. And you also have a HA McNamara 2357 Private, 33rd Battalion, 7th of June 1917. These are all around the 7th and the 10th, where the heavy shelling took place around here. These guys are shooting for ducks, and I hope no ducks land in here, because I'll be ducking all right. It's just looking at just the other side, the, the fence there. Just into the wood. Okay, I'm just going to go in front of the camera and uh, talk about this particular area here. <coughs> the, um, the area around here was heavily shelled by the Germans um, early June 1917. And of course, Captain Piggott, who was in charge of C Company, with some of his men, went into a still hear the guy doing his duck hunting there in the forest so I'm going to stay out of there. Anyway they all got into a shell hole and um, unfortunately a, a shell landed and they got blown up. Uh, there was a survivor I believe a Sergeant Cook but he was nearby and of course Captain Pickett was taken to a casualty clearing station not too far from here of course died of his wounds and buried up in the corner there uh, with his own flag here. McNamara, Martin McNamara is just here he um, was also in the same shell hole as him. Uh, but there are 78 Australians buried here. And there's an early regiment number there, number 9, to a sergeant, Norman, who was age 30. But um, yeah, so this is Toronto Avenue. Just going to go for a walk in the wood. The, um, the shooting's just to the right of me. So I'm going to take a uh, retreat to the left of me and just walk in uh, in the wood here. As you, I mean the build up of um, leaves and that certainly uh, you know could be over a meter, could be more. Uh, there's so much growth here, but you can make out as you walk in the wood trenches where small creeks are 
and there's a shell hole just here as you can see just in the wood just there could be trenches over there all along here where the water flows so I'm where I'm walking the Australians and then of course some British contingent would have been in this area here the wood actually goes into a clearing just not about a hundred meters away from me there out into the fields but we're actually just walking I believe over a shell hole which is full of leaves so I sank a little bit but as I walk in the wood you sort of drop every so often there's a fairly large pool of water over here yet again that could be part of a trench system or just uh, one big shell hole and I've only walked 50 metres from the uh, from the cemetery yet again it winds up around there you can see where it winds through there just between the trees over there just a big pool of water just sitting over there so I'm just going to head back I don't want to venture too far I don't want to get shot by the duck, duck hunter if he decides to come over this side of the, uh, the roadway it's not fenced off this so you shouldn't of course that's where the car is and the cemetery is just through that clearing there I dare say if you sort of dug up some of these areas you'd find small artefacts just looking out to the fields near St Ives I think this place is there's a car coming behind me just going to scan around down into the wood where I've come from just down in that area there and that's a little cemetery of um, Mud Corner just in there if you continue around the winding road you actually go into the wood You've got Plogstert Cemetery and, um, and of course Toronto Avenue. I've just come across another Bairns Father signpost so we'll read a bit of info from it. It said here it says Old Bill. The Old Bill character, a lieutenant with the 1st Royal Warwickshire Regiment. Just put this down here. Acting as a machine gun officer in this area, uh, Bruce Bairns Father made the name for himself cartoons he sketched humorous situations depicting Tommy's misery and discomfort now, these become popular with the troops and his old Bill character with wall with a walrus mustache was born illustrations began to appear on the walls of cottages barns and dugouts in the area of St Ives the bystander magazine in London heard about him and he was soon a regular contributor to the magazine resulting in a series of publications for the general's public dedicated to old Bill the first Royal, Royal Warwick's eventually left the Plug Street sector and marched into the second battle of Ypres when Bairns father was wounded on the 24th of April 1915. He was invalided to England, having contributed to the final victory by letting loose Old Bill on the battlefields of France and Flanders. So this is him, Bruce Bairns father to the left, and the character Old Bill just on the right. It was certainly a morale boost to the troops. Just heading towards um, Foxter at the moment. Not too, a um, couple, about 500 yards down the road is uh, Hyde Park Corner. So I'm gonna, I should be there shortly. I'm going to have a bit of lunch around there, just take a bit of a break and uh, enjoy my nice bread rolls I made this morning. And uh, just coming up to the Hyde Park on where now. Put my indicator on the park, got a guy behind me. There it is there, just on the right hand side. Okay, I'm just out, standing outside the Strand uh, Military Cemetery. 1914, 1918. Head up towards that direction there, takes you back up to Hyde Park Corner. And I'm going to go for a walk around into the cemetery itself. And in the distance there is uh, Flocks of Wood. information there uh, 
about uh, about the Strand Military Cemetery. This area here, they had all different British names: Piccadilly Circus, the Strand, Blocksturt. That was Belgium, High Park Corner. So, given names, remember uh, remember home basically by the British. Strand Military Cemetery was started with two burials in October 1914. It wasn't used again until 1917 and 351 burials were made. 232 of which were Australian casualties of the mezzanine offensive in June of that year. It was a burial plot for the Australian 3rd Division Central Dressing Station which they call Charing Cross. After the war it was known as the Australian Cemetery it was renamed after the concentration of graves by then Imperial War Graves Commission. 777 graves were gathered from between Wischat and Armatiers and from behind the German lines to complete today's cemetery. It now contains 1148 graves and memorials, which 356 are identified. Two of these unnamed RAF graves from July 1918 are originally buried in then the La Torque. La Torque Birth Farm German Cemetery. Eight graves of men who died in the Second World War and British units garrisoned in the area in 1914 prior to the evacuation of Dunkirk. The track alongside the cemetery is the start of the Strand Communication Trench, which will take a walk down, which the cemetery takes its name. It was the main route, then a plank road by which troops moved through the wood to the trenches on the eastern side of the edge. And the field a little further along the mezzanine rose to the left, the original Charing Cross dressing station. Now that was a little bit further down there, and I'll stop down there and take uh, some footage and a little bit of video. But I'll come down here to the original dressing stations there, and what the cemetery looked like. The strains where they were buried. Just walked into the cemetery here. Well kept, as you can see, and just in there in the background is the is the wood, and the, the main road, mezzanine road, is just to the to the left of me over the wall there. Now all these ones uh, buried along here it says in the memory of the 11 soldiers of the British Empire who fell in 1914 and were buried in Ploxter Wood New Cemetery, but his graves were destroyed by later battles. Only British. And here uh, the Australians buried in these first plots. Ari Taylor, 7th of June 1917, aged 18. That's the first one I've come across. Just there. Staples, Lynch, Lee, Dunlop. And they stretch right down the very back there, which I'll take a walk. As I continue to walk down the roads, Private Patrick Thomas Pickard, 35th Battalion, age 23, 7th of June, so all during the Battle of Mezzanines in this area. Second Lieutenant Griffith, Norfolk Regiment. The row here, you've got Cusack 31st, 5th Battalion, age 34, Westrup, 9th of June, Baxter, Norris, Kane, 9th of June. So they certainly got hammered around this area. They were brought in from the wood, which is over there, uh, to the clearing station, which is just where they got the farm, is there. That's where the Charing Cross. Charing Cross Casualty clearing station is just the other side of there. And the entry to the cemetery is just over there. You can just see my car there. Canadians are buried here. Um, Side of the Great War Border Regiment, 
Curtin, Minster Regiment, Anderson, South Lancashire Regiment. And you've got this spot down here. A lot of Australians buried, buried down the back here. This may have been the original part of the cemetery where they did mention the Australians were first buried here during that battle or brought to the clearing station and then buried here just in this spot back row ah, some British buried amongst the Australians here 2000 private TR leaves them 44th Battalion, 4th of June. Private Barlow, 4th of June, age 27. Gildersleeves, 3rd Australian Pioneers, age 27th, 4th of June. Shields, 41st Battalion, age 20, 29. McNabb, 41st Battalion. Morgan, 41st Battalion. SD Fox, 38th Battalion, all 1917 June. Nightingale, 42nd Battalion. Two here. 948 Private LA Maxwell, 39th Battalion, aged 21, 3rd of June 1917. Ever remembered, to dearly loved, to be forgotten. And here you have Lieutenant Rutledge, Australian Field Artillery. And he's buried here by himself. 3rd of June 1917, age 32. Okay, that's the uh, Charing Cross dressing station just there. It's um, a farmyard by the looks of it. Hasn't been destroyed, which is great. So they're brought over here to be buried. Maybe uh, the track comes through where I'm standing now. And that's looking back down into the wood area there. Okay, I'm just walking the roads here. 46 Private Ledwich, 38th Battalion, age 26. I've seen a few of these where uh, T.H. Ahern served as 1054 Lance Corporal A. Shaw, 40th Battalion, 13th of May, 1917. Captain L. Roberts, 30th of April, 1917. And um, one sunk and one down here, which is a bit sad. I am Berryman, age 21. And of course, there's, some, there's a New Zealander there, Milne, next to Henry Max Stanford, 24th of April, 660, done, 43rd Battalion. But they're buried right at the very back of the cemetery. It's sad about that one collapsing. Now right in the corner of the cemetery itself, and that's the entry just the other side of the hedges there. And you can see the, the dressing station. There. Just on the other side of the uh, cemetery now, and there's some German graves there, just two there, but it's uh, interesting at the back here. You have four Australian graves, one New Zealand, sorry, five Australian graves, one New Zealand, and two German. Now, the inscription on the above of each one here believed to be buried in this cemetery so these are just the, the headstones to say well it could be buried here so we've got an ivy 7th of June Private Thomas 33rd Battalion Private Kurzweil 33rd Battalion Private Hunter 34th Battalion all killed around the 7th of June well, actually on the 7th of June Private Brown New Zealand Wellington Regiment 12th of June Lance Corporal Pryor, 34th Australian Infantry Battalion, 10th of June 1917, age 26. An Anzac hero, so he was an original. Two German ones um, are here. 
First one is R Rudolf Debus, 27th of 4th, 1918. There's a couple buried there actually. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three in each by the looks of it. 16th of April, 18. To the left of me and uh, Bayer on the 30th, the 4th, 1917. Yeah, so we have two German, one Kiwi and five Australians. Okay, I'm just on the side of the road heading back towards uh, Mezzanines and that's the Charing Cross uh, dressing station which the third uh, Australian casualty clearing station was set up just there. I think that's the back of it but I'm going to go to the other side of this farmhouse. I'm not sure whether you can actually go down and have a look at it but there's a farmhouse there and it may be on their property and while I'm walking there's a sign to Plogstert so just head into there I head down the road and head into uh, Plogstert can't make much of it but <laughs> they've got ducks in there by the looks of it anyway that's the, the clearing station just there about the best shot I'm going to get and of course in the distance is the woods. Now unfortunately I can't get uh, too close to it so I'm in a little bit better position here. Let's see if I can zoom right in. That's you can see the bars in the back of each one. Looks like there's three separate ones there. On the other side's the main entries and uh, it's overgrown there with uh, with the grass on the top. At least they haven't destroyed them which is great. So that's the Charing Cross 3rd Division Casualty Clearing Station. Just as you enter Plogster on the left. And of course uh, Strand Military Cemetery is just uh, as you're heading into uh, to Plogster. Just past here, about 50 metres or so. Right, I took a bit of a detour and went towards the Underhill Cemetery which is just turned left past Hyde Park Corner heading towards Mezzanines. It's brought me to... Uh, on a small country road and uh, it's an interesting view because I'm looking down well I will be shortly down into mezzanines or mezzens as they pronounce it um, which is just to my right it's a little bit hazy uh, it's not raining like the last few days it's quite a nice uh, quite a nice day but where I was at the iris um, Peace Park is there in the distance you can just well I'll zoom in a bit and there it is there and obviously in the past there is the the church or cathedral so that's the view I'm getting from here now I did take some footage from over there to across here okay I had to stop filming for a minute had some cars come up the track but that's the Peace Park and as I said uh, mezzanines I'm heading into there there is a small museum but so all around me the battles uh, of mezzanines would have been raging and being a high point the Germans obviously may have had this area where I'm standing. Uh, the road continues that way, takes me down towards a mezzanine road. Yeah, so I'm fairly high up here. But certainly a good vantage point for the uh, his defensive positions. A bit of John Williamson in the background. Um, that's, I said I'm driving now so I've got the camera out the window. Just try and continue rolling here as I drive. And it stinks around here too, a farm. Slowly going down into the, uh, the valley. Swing out from there. Right, this is the junction here. I turn left and head towards mezzanines, turn right towards towards Plug Surf and of course Armatiers. 
I see what I got. Stop it. Okay, this is coming into mezzanine. Mezzanine's, um, I'm on the road at the moment. You can see the, the church there in the distance. And it says, welcome to Flanders, mezzanine or mezzanines. So we just climb up into the little village. And uh, going to have a look at their, their museum. Uh, just the left in, in the trees there, you can see the Irish Memorial. See if I can keep this rolling until we enter the village to give you a sign. I've got a car behind me, so just got to be a bit careful. Okay, we're just entering that, that little village now. So the signpost there on the right. Okay, I'm just here at the New Zealand Memorial and just outside of Mezzanines. I'm just going to go for a bit of a walk around before I actually go into the, uh, the village. This is the entry to uh, the memorial. So I've got a small path which leads you down into the memorial itself. Okay, it's the memorial there. It reads, In honour of the men of the New Zealand Division, the Battle of Mezzanines, the 7th to the 10th of June 1917. Lost so many, like, uh, lost so many Australians. This is the path that... Uh, I've come from, takes you back onto the little road there. And this is looking down into the valley. A little bit of a viewing uh, area down here, which is good. And I'll take some footage to where I was just before, looking back into the village. Where I was was just right over there. Okay, now just down here near the um, viewing platform, looks like there's a German bunker down there. And to the left of me there is another one, which is just there, so I'll go and have a look uh, around those and see if we can go inside. And this looks back up in to the memorial. It's quite a nice setting. And this is where they would have lost the men around here, on this particular ridge. Too much, and I can't, it's all fuzzy anyway. Try that again. Can't see much, you can see the uh, steel reinforcing the concrete. There's an entry just here. I'll duck down, it's a bit wet around it though, we've had a lot of rain. Obviously you can't get in there. Just walking around it though. There's not much there at all. Somebody's uh, come to the trouble of lifting the grate, so it gives you an idea in there. That would have been the front of the bunker there, facing up and over down into the valley. It's just unfortunate there's some overgrowth there. So the one here is uh, a little bit more open, but I'm not going there because it's full of water, as you can see. It's definitely not swimming down in there. It's a tour group down there. Where they're standing, or where I was standing, is actually a German trench, so you had the bunkers either side. And of course, the uh, it's very high up here, as you can see. Memorial here, uh, in honour of the men, New Zealand Division, the Battle of Mezzanines, 17, 7th to the 14th of June, 1917. Just down the bottom here says the New Zealand Division, on the 7th of June, captured this ridge and advanced 2,000 yards through Mezzanines to the objective on the eastern side. From the uttermost ends of the earth. So, so where I'm standing the New Zealanders actually captured this ridge from the Germans. This the uh, Irish Peace Park. Um, where I am is in the valley um, below the ridge where the New Zealanders uh, took it from the Germans. The mezzanine is just uh, about there. And this is the ridge that they took. This road, I believe, was called New Zealand Road, and all up through there, the New Zealanders fought their way to the top. That's the memorial there, and you've got the gap between the two trees. 
that's where the um, the bunkers are either side and that's where the Germans were entrenched during the attack by the New Zealands and I'm <laughs> I'm what say 500 meters away standing here and they lost a lot of New Zealands on this ground and next of course is the Irish Peace Park just there I'm heading to the Pool of Peace which was one of the largest explosions or underground explosions uh, here in uh, in Flanders it could be heard right over to London if you're heading that road there that road takes you down to Plogster and Armatiers but um, yeah I took footage from up there you could just see a little bit of the ridge but actually being down here and looking up at the ridge and look you got cows grazing there now where the New Zealanders would have clambered up the ridge through shell holes through mud just to take the uh, the trenches there or the high spot from the Germans very famous battle here Do a pan around. Just looking across the fields, newly planted crop, and the road there, which takes you back to Ypres. Wipers, yips, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to continue along this track here. I'm not sure it's going to take me to the uh, Pool of Peace or the Peace Pool, but I'll um, I'll find it anyway. It's a close in shot of the memorial there and I'll just slowly pan out. That's a mezzanine ridge. Okay, I just got some info here on the battle. Uh, New Ze Zealand Memorial and Park uh, Bunkers. The memorial is identical to that at uh, Grand Vitel. It was unveiled on the 1st of August 1924 by King Gabriel, one of the Belgians, and overlooks Memorial Park at the foot of which two large, well-preserved pillboxes are. It was well known that the Germans were constructing a number of pillboxes on the Mezzanine Ridge prior to the opening of the 3rd uh, Ypres Frequent patrols were made into German lines in order to find out more about the defences. The New Zealanders maintained daily intelligence summaries on the current state of the defences and their engineers blew up concrete dugouts half a mile south of here at Petit Dove Farm, barely two days before the offensive opened. These two pillboxes appear identical, but the one on the left was made in situ, with the other was put together with concrete blocks probably to a prefabricated design. On the 7th of June, the attack here was led by the 3rd New Zealand Rifle Brigade, advancing broadly from the direction of Newkirk, and the bunkers were taken in the first hour. From the seat between the bunkers, a good view of the mezzanine battlefield can be had provided trees to not obscure the view. The front lines here were about 700 yards away. Take straight ahead at 12 o'clock, and at one o'clock, the church the skyline in Newkirk. So what it's doing is basically up there it's giving you directions on where uh, uh, where you can actually see. Um, so it took them an hour to get up through the ridge and take the bunkers. Not too bad eh? Okay I just left the uh, mezzanines and uh, to the left is the uh, the church, to the right is the Irish Peace Park and of course next is the New Zealand Memorial. I've just pulled off the main road to a um, a small cemetery just on my left. Just going to pan around. This is a road, it's a private road onto a farm. But on the farm is the um, ration farm. They plus Dorve Annex. So there's another cemetery with the same name. This is the annex to it. And it's up there. Just take out the green path there. There is um, could be the main cemetery just up here on the left. 
where the memorial cross is. But I'll go for a walk up there anyway and have a look. Okay, this is the entry to Russian Farm Annex. I don't think this one getting visited very much, but we're going to have a bit of a look. Highland Light Infantry. It's the first row I see along here. There is an Australian, well, a couple of Australians actually, a few. Corporal Cornish, 44th Battalion. Hefferin, 33rd Battalion, June 1917. Private. Pretty John, 10th Battalion, 6th of January 1918, age 23. Jenkins, Private, 8th, 10th Battalion, and you have a Court Barton. And you have a VT Stone MM, 12th Battalion, 16th of January 1918, aged 21. Okay, just going to read from the Ration Farm uh, Annex uh, the Fogster, it's outside of Fogster. Not far from the visit is actually. Now, you've got 177 from the UK, 12 Australian, and known to be buried in the cemetery. So there's 193 soldiers buried here. In the commune uh, Plog Street, north of the wood, with two considerable farms now rebuilt called La Place Dove and La Petite Dove. The latter was the object of a celebrated raid by the 7th Canadian Infantry Battalion in November 1915. The former, which was generally within British lines, was used at times as a battalion headquarters, and it was also known as Ration Farm, from the fact that the battalion transport could approach it at night with rations. Ration Farm Annex was begun in 1915 until January 1918. There are now over 200 war casualty commemorated in this site. The cemetery covers an area of 1.4, oh, sorry, 1,459 square metres. Uh, sort of cemetery farm. So Ration Farm was over here. This is the uh, rebuilt farmhouses. The cows are grazing. Yeah, nice little cemetery. There's some buried up on the back wall, though. I'll go and have a look at those. Because that could be known to be buried in this cemetery. And the cemetery you can just see up through the trees there. Beautiful line of trees just up behind the barn there. Let me get a bit of view from the other uh, cemetery. But the headstones on the back wall there are varying regiments. Irish, uh, Linster Regiment, which is... Irish and um, a little bit overgrown on the on the hedges there. You've got I'm um, just looking at this here. There is one German up there. I've just noticed that. And there's three here buried together. Donald on the 17th of May in 1916. Freeland 1916. Berryman and Pepper. Age 19, WG Day, Royal Sussex Regiment. So these are early, very early burials. Here you have all from the Royal Sussex Regiment. Age 23, 23, 22, 23. Men's Corporate and Privates. Gorry's Raffle, Golding and more. Nineteen fifteen, even earlier. We have a German here. Twenty fourth of April, nineteen eighteen. Okay, so these are February, nineteen fifteen. Australia was silver. But its men formed over in the sewers there, ready to go to Gallipoli when these guys have been killed. 
and there's a lone one in the corner there March 1915 age 28 both killed on the 29th of March Teeny and Fagan Royal Dublin Fusiliers and up the back there all the 12th of April Royal Dublin Fusiliers Conlon Quirk Saunders Doherty and ball by himself 2625 Private D. Turton Manchester Regiment 14th of January 1915 and that's the setting behind his stone Okay, I've just um, come down to the other cemetery here. It's uh, La Place d'Or Farm Cemetery. So this is the main one here. The other one was the Annex. Just down there. Got a nice setting here. And the grass there. It's so well trimmed. Okay, I'm just going to leave, read uh, a little bit of information here. In the valley of the River Dove, and near the Plock Street Wood, the two farms, the Petit was the object of a success, sex, successful raid by the 7th Canadian Inf Infantry Battalion in November 1915. So I noticed too there's a lot of Canadians buried here in this cemetery. And La Place Dove, which was uh, generally within the Allied lines, was used at times as a battalion headquarters. It was also known as Ration Farm, because the battalion could transport and approach at night with rations. Uh, this particular cemetery was begun in 1915 by the 48th South Midland Division and continued in use until May 1918, when it fell back into the hands of the Germans. The cemetery contains 336 Commonwealth burials of the First World War. It's located 10.5k uh, south of Ypres, and there's 86 Australians, 101 UK, 88 Canadian, 61 New Zealand, of 336. There's no unnamed um, graves here, which is which, you know, it's nice. Um, so we might just go and have a bit of a look around. That's the um, the line of trees I mentioned a bit earlier. Up the little uh, country path or country road, and uh, this is really well kept. This one here, only Canadians here in the front row. Just get some dates off him. 19, 15, yeah, October 15, September 15. See some New Zealand graves at the back there. And some Australian ones as well. There's a group of four Australians fairly close together. So I'll go and have a look at those. I said these are a lot of Canadian 1915. The headstones are um, uh, slightly faded. Uh, this is a private Philip, 13th Canadian Infantry. Uh, he's 20. And there's two Germans buried here as well. 1918 and 1918 when the Germ Germans retook this position here. I've okay, got the Australians at the back here as well. And you can just see the memorial cross of Russian Farm Annex just there in the distance. Okay, these Australians here that their stones are fading a bit, but I got a Bladden, a uh, Macklin. Egan, Streetman, just can't make it, North Hill I think it is, they're all from the 57th Battalion, died around March 1918, uh, Haleberg, 57th Battalion, yeah, so they're all 57th at the front here, the second Lieutenant Franklin, all at the back here, 57th Battalion, February of 1918, Wise, Martinal, Sergeant William J. King, age 37, Archer, 57th Battalion, Homer, 57th Battalion, 
Lynch 57 and Gunner by Australian Field Artillery so this row here and the one at the back as Australians have um, lost their lives in this area I just noticed one in the corner it's an Australian soldier 2340 Private Burbeck 5th Australian Pioneers 23rd of March 1918 age 31 he died to keep Australia free for the honour of his race so I dare say where the headstone is is where he fell or close by the fields are there so I've got a Sergeant Major McGowan DCM Regimental number 173 we now we know he did his duty and died bravely as he fought. DCM winner and the Sergeant Major, early number, this a, a, a Gallipoli veteran. Right, that's 473, Colour Sergeant Major JB McGowan, DCM, 30th Battalion Australian Infantry, 24th of March 1918, age 38. Phillips from the 30th, 30th Battalion along here. Barry, 30th Battalion. Leighton, 30th Battalion. Lane, 30th Battalion. All round March of 1918. Staines, Yeoman. Bridgement, age 22. Captain E.D. Adams, MC. 30th Battalion, 80th of March, would have been their commanding officer in the field. Corporal McKenzie, R.C. Martin, T.A. Speedy. As I walk amongst them, 57th Battalion, Knight, 8th Battalion, Maxwell, Pearson in the 8th Battalion, Roland Proctor Peck, 30th Battalion, Savage, Pratt, 30th Battalion. F.C. Moody served as L. Sorry, 1193 Corporal M.G. Minter, 30th Battalion, 14th of December, 1917, age 26. In love and memory of our dear brother, of Mrs. Taylor of London. And we have a Private Crowhurst, 5th Battalion, 2nd of December, 1917, age 22. Then we have a 2478 Sergeant J. G. Morris, DCM, 5th Australian Pioneers. They're both from the Pioneers. 2nd December, same day, age 26. A soldier and a man, he died, honoured by all his country's pride. 32nd Battalion, 32nd Battalion. Just walking down these roads here, New Zealanders. Aimer, New Zealand Rifle Brigade, New Zealand Rifle Brigade. 25th of May 1917, they were killed. 19th of May, Wetherill. Islip, MM. First New Zealand MM I've come across. New Zealand is June 1917. Of Australia, Badnorm. 48th Battalion, 2nd of June 1917. And up the back rows we have more Australians. 40th Battalion, age 40. Farusian, I think his name is. Then we have Sergeant Pratt, 26th of August. So these, Roland, 51st. Cooper, 51st. So they're all killed in August of uh, 1917. Just in the back row here, 26th of August. Three of them, Thomas Private, 51st Battalion. Charles Sutton, 51st Battalion. G.H. Barnes, 51st Battalion. Age 32. Age 22. And age 28. So, as I said earlier, where the headstones are is normally where they were buried originally. Okay, I'm just near a bunker they call uh, Skip Point. That's the, uh, the German uh, defensive bunker there. 
There's some information about it here, which is which is good. Not in Dutch. Some good photos on there. And um, I'll just pan out to the field, just in this direction here. That's um, mezzanines is down in that way there. I'm just heading all towards the pool of um, or the peace pool, or peace pond. German bunker known as Skip Point. This bunker played a, an important role in the German defence of the south of Wisht chat directly after the explosion of the deep mines some uh, quotations taken from Irish journal journals going over the top one young officer of the 9th Royal, Royal Rifle screamed out follow me no sooner had the creeping barrage lifted when the attacking 9th Rifles came under machine gun attack from, from the skip and nag points it seems the creeping barrage didn't knock out these posts further down the line the 8th Rifles to a court by machine gun post at Bone Point. So this is um, a heavily defended area around here. Just one of the, um, the German bunkers there. And I'll just come down onto the... This is a defensive bunker there. Just shows you uh, the British, or how it's set up there, and then the British and German line. So. I'm here, and this is the village of, well I can't pronounce it, Wishchat I think it is, um, Wolvergern is down here, so you had um, different areas of where the bunkers were, this is a, looks like a postcard that's been written over the top, showing the German, showing the Germans there in their trenches, walking around the Pool of Peace at the moment, um, that's the long tree cemetery which is just down there just amongst the trees and this is a view on the side of the crater the crater's uh, got a lot of trees and bush around it so there is a path leading up to it which is um, just in through this direction here it's certainly a high point here and uh, that's why they tunnel under and blew the whole place up Here's the entry just here. So an old windmill, windmill was on this point. This crater is a result of the underground explosion of ammunition depot together with the explosion of 18 other deep mines on the 7th of June 1917. This formed the signal for the Allied attack on the German positions and the liberation of Wish chat and mezzanine. The tunnel to the ammunition depot was 521 metres long and the depot itself was located 27 metres underground. Incredible. It just shows you here on the board. And the actual crater where I'm standing at the moment is there. been broken I think it's cool. Pool of, Pool of Peace 1917. Yeah it just talks about um, Span Brock Molen or Lone Tree Crater. The crater was one of ten blown up by the second army on the 7th of June 1917. Massive explosion here. The crater is a property of Tok H in Poppering. So Talbot House actually owned this property story goes that Tubby Clayton didn't want it sort of filled in and there's a pool of peace and of course under there is buried a lot of Germans that is a big crater this is the pool of peace That's where I've walked in from there. So I'm on the side of the crater. It is so peaceful. The birds in the background. Very tranquil indeed. And that's a pool of peace from the little cemetery down here, the Lone Tree Cemetery. And this is just close by the cemetery, remains of um, yeah, blockhouse. I'm just about to head in through the gate here. 
Pace just about run out. So this is Lone Tree Cemetery, 1916 to 1917, and uh, it's only a small cemetery. I'll get enough video there to overlook down into the valley there. Quite a nice setting indeed. Just walking along here, the 7th of June, that's when they blew the big craters up. These here from the uh, Royal Irish Rifles were all killed on the 7th of June, 1917. And with that, I'll fade out to the Memorial Cross. <laughs>